Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of one 21 month old toddler and I'm currently 29 weeks pregnant with baby girl number two. I know Montessori toys can often seem really expensive. A lot of that stems from the fact that Montessori emphasizes the aesthetics of the toys and activities that children are playing with. So most often you'll find that really high quality Montessori toys are made of wood. This is a good thing because it means it'll last longer, but it can also be a downside for your wallet because often high quality translates to a little bit more expensive. In the world of Montessori, you don't need need a ton of toys. The emphasis is actually on quality over quantity, but if you are looking to provide some Montessori inspired activities and toys for your child to play with at home without breaking the bank, then you're in luck. From one busy parent to another, today I'm gonna to share with you a whole bunch of Montessori inspired toys and activities for babies and toddlers that you can make yourself at home. Nearly all of them are made with recycled materials that I would have otherwise thrown away in the trash and other random odds and ends kinds of things that I had laying around the house. On occasion, there were one or two things that I had to go out to the dollar store to get, but really that's it. Now I know a lot of you are probably wondering what's an appropriate age range for some of the toys and activities that I'm about to show you. And honestly, I don't want to put a label on it because you guys know all children are unique. They all develop on their own timeline. So some of the toys and activities that I provided for my daughter might not be appropriate at the same age for your child. This is kind of one of those situations where you just kind of have to feel it out and think to yourself, is my child ready for this yet? Based on what I see them doing day to day. Obviously, if they're still putting lots of things in their mouth, then some of the toys that I'm gonna show you that have small pieces are probably not a good idea unless they're 100% supervised. Take a look at where your child is developmentally with fine motor skills. Are they able to grasp smaller pieces or are they still using more of a palmer grip? Is your child talking yet? Even if they're not, it's still Still okay to introduce some of the language activities that I'm going to show you as well as kind of a jump start on their language skills. The really cool thing is that your child will probably be engaged with a lot of these toys and activities for a long time as their skills develop. So where they might use it for one thing when they're a much younger baby or a toddler, as their skills get better, they'll be able to do more things with it and manipulate the toys and activities in a different way. So let's go ahead and jump into what the toys and activities are. First, I'm gonna go ahead and start with some of the sensory toys. These are not Montessori specific, because in Montessori, there really isn't a technical sensory toy activity category, but Maria Montessori did notice that young toddlers and babies really liked to use their hands and their senses to learn about the world. So these kind of apply in that way. These ones are great for younger babies, but toddlers can benefit from them as well. The first ones are these sensory bags. You simply put a bunch of hair gel, a little bit of food coloring, and different objects in each one. But I just put some little toys that I got at the dollar store inside of one of them and then I put some googly eyes in the other one. I made this around Halloween. You can theme them to all the different holidays and whatnot, whatever you want, but they love to basically just squish the things around and kind of feel it because it feels interesting to them. Another variation on this is taping it into a window or taping it down to the floor or their high chair tray for them to manipulate that way as well. You just wanna make sure that you seal up all the edges with clear packing tape or some kind of strong duct tape so that the gel doesn't leak out. These are sensory bottles. I've also seen them called Discovery bottles. Same idea, you fill it with a bunch of water and just random objects. Sometimes they can be themed together. These ones I just put a bunch of craft materials in. This was like my snowy theme winter one that I put those little blue gemstones in as well as a bunch of little snowflake confetti. And you can also make them without water. You can fill them with different materials like rice and those little beads, or you can put beans in them so that they're like shakers. And then when you're done, you just hot glue the top part so that it doesn't come open. As long as you seal them really good, the water does not come out. I've had these forever. My daughter shakes them all over the place and they have never once leaked. The rice ones are also really fun for them to roll around and you can put different types of objects on the insides. So I use these little um, glass beads, but you can put like little animal figurines and all kinds of other random things in there. Next up, I have some of these rainbow ribbon rings. I went to a craft store and bought these little wooden rings that are one piece, but all you do is tie them on there and then burn the end part so that it doesn't come become frayed. My daughter used to love running these through her fingers and running them along her neck and she would chew on the little wooden part all the time and chew on the ribbons. So these are fantastic. Another really easy activity that you can do with recycled materials are shakers. So this is just an old hazelnut cream purulene can that I filled with beans and then I hot glue the top so it doesn't come off. And this is one of my husband's old hair gel containers that I filled with little tiny beads. 
so it would make a slightly different sound. And again, I sealed the top with hot glue. And the last one that I would consider more of a sensory tactile activity that you can do with even the youngest of babies is the concept of rough versus smooth. So my husband just had a little leftover block of wood in the garage that I asked him to cut a piece of sandpaper to, and that's basically it. This is actually great also as a language activity. Once they get a little bit older, then they can actually start learning the words rough and smooth. But as a tactile experience in the beginning, it's also great. So the next category of activities and toys that I wanna show you guys are more for hand-eye coordination. So obviously these are gonna be for slightly older babies and toddlers that are working on their fine motor skills. And again, hand-eye coordination. But there's absolutely no reason you can't try these out with your younger baby to see if they're ready for them. So the first one I wanna show you guys is a tugging lid. I've also seen tugging boxes, but honestly, this was just a little easier to make and a little easier for my daughter to handle from a younger age. It's simply an old Tupperware container lid that I punched some holes in with a pair of scissors and then I threaded a bunch of different types of ribbon through the holes and knotted both ends so that all she has to do is tug on one side and the ribbon will come through. And then she can flip it over and do the same exact thing. If you have a child that likes to pull wipes out of the container, you definitely wanna give this one a try. First, they have to learn how to do the button, which is fun just all by itself. Once they have that mastered, you can kind of cut this to make it a little wider and easier for things to be pulled out. But you can put tissue paper, you can put play scarves, which is what I've got in this one. You can put scraps of fabric in it, whatever you can find that kind of comes out in the same way that a wipe would. My toddler still loves playing with this toy to this day. So this is definitely a keeper. One of the most classic Montessori toys that you will see that is often very pricey is an object permanence box. It's simply a box with a hole in the top where the child can place a ball where it obviously momentarily disappears until it rolls back out of the front. This is great for even the youngest of babies who are just mastering the concept of object permanence. Also, getting the ball in the hole is a task in and of itself for younger babies. This is something that I made from an old bunt cake box. You can actually see that on the bottom. They're honestly not hard to make. I didn't even use like plans or anything. I just kind of winged it based on knowing what the design should look like. Even if you had like an old shoe box, something that's made of a more sturdy cardboard, you could totally make one of these yourself. So simply flip the box over, cut a hole in the bottom, affix the lid a little bit further down so that there's a tray for the ball to fall into. I raised it up a little bit with some extra pieces of cardboard so that the ball would always roll forward instead of getting stuck in the back by accident. And I also found with my design that I had to modify it a little bit. I had to add two little pieces on either side, kind of like a pinball machine to help funnel the ball forward because sometimes it would get stuck in the corners of Otherwise, but that was a really simple modification to make. So again, this is an object permanence box, DIY, super simple. Another simple and fun one to make is using a leftover milk container that you rinse out and you can pick up a package of these little wooden peg people at a craft store. And the whole idea is simply to get the peg people into the jug. You don't wanna give them too many pegs. I think I gave my daughter eight here and that's plenty. Once they've got them all in there, they have just as much fun shaking it around and then dumping it back out to get all the pieces out again. Another fun variation on this is another type of posting activity, which is where they're putting things into a hole. I reused an old snack container and cut a hole roughly the size of a card. So if you have any like leftover hotel keys or expired gift cards or uh, closed store cards, then you can give them to your child and allow them to put them into the container. Again, figuring out which way to put the card is a challenge in and of itself, but once they've mastered that, they really love putting them into the slot, and I think hearing the sound on the bottom is part of the engagement. What I would consider a slightly tougher variation of that is the same idea, except you use a taller container and craft popsicle sticks, the bigger kind, and you cut many different holes for them to choose from to put the popsicle sticks into. My 21 month old toddler still is mastering this. She hasn't quite gotten like 100% of the hang of it. So this is an activity that'll last you for a really long time. I think the main reason is because not only are the holes smaller, but there are multiple holes and they're all different directions. So it makes the activity just a little bit more challenging for them. Another idea that you can use for old cards, anybody who has given their child their wallet to keep 
keep them occupied while they're out knows that they love opening wallets and trying to pull out all of your cards. So if you don't have an old wallet laying around, this is one of my husband's old ones, you could probably buy them at the dollar store for really cheap. Just fill up the wallet with some of your old cards and hand it over and let the child have fun with it. They love figuring out how to get the cards out and then eventually as their skills get better, they love learning how to put the cards back into all the different little slots and pockets. They also love playing with zippers. So if you have any wallets that have zippers on them and little pockets for them to place cards, that would be another really great idea as well. I know many of you have probably seen latch boards and latch boxes. This is a very simple variation of that. I went to Michael's and just found one single box with one single type of latch on it. You have to open up the latch like this, and if you put an enticing object inside that they would like to play with, I've put all kinds of things like necklaces and things like that in there that make noise when you shake it. They're motivated to try to get the lock open. And I do believe they sell different types of lock enclosures that you can try. I just happened to buy this one. These cost like next to nothing at the craft store. Here we have practice not only for hand-eye coordination, but also for learning colors and language. It's very simple. It's a leftover egg cart that you basically color or you can do like dot stickers, whatever works for you, paint it in the bottoms to match the different colored pom-poms. And then they just have to match the color to the right hole. When I first started making it, I started with just the primary colors. And then I went ahead and added orange once she mastered those. And I'm still planning to add two more colors to it. Another excellent sensory and hand-eye coordination activity is simply to have a bin full of beans or rice or some other kind of sensory material that your child can dig through. As you can see, mine is filled with all kinds of things that my daughter has been using to dig, including a, her dump truck. <laughs> but honestly, you just need a couple of different types of scoops. This is an old coffee scoop. This is part of my tea diffuser. This is an old snack container. She does have some actual like scoops and things from some of her other toy sets, but they love just scooping and pouring into different types of containers. So if you make something like this, aim for a variety of shapes and sizes and possibly different materials you can trade out between beans and rice. But the more variety you give them, the better off it is. You can even bury little objects inside of there and have them dig for them to try to find them. My daughter loves that game. This one I would recommend waiting on until they're just a little bit older, simply because of the fact that these pieces are so small and you don't want them to choke on them. But also because I had to teach my daughter that the beans needed to stay in the bin. Otherwise, they just get so excited, they have a tendency to throw them all over the place, and you definitely don't want that. And last but not least, I wanna show you guys just a couple of language activities that you can start using with your baby and toddler once they start picking up on language. These ones are a really fun and easy one to start with. They're called Familiar Faces Cards, and you simply just get a picture of everyone in your family, and you put their names underneath them, and you leave them in a little basket for your child to look at. Babies love looking at faces, so this is something you can introduce from even the youngest age. If you laminate them, they'll hold up to all kinds of bending and crumpling and tearing. We've had these ones for a very long time and they're still holding up just fine. Now that my daughter is actually talking and using names, she's able to tell me who is who with accuracy. But in the beginning, it was more of just me showing her and saying, look, it's mama. This is Dada, and so on. You can also make classification cards for your child. And these are different from flashcards because you're not quizzing them on it per se. In fact, you don't even have to have the name. I wanted the name up below as a personal preference, but I do believe in traditional Montessori environments, there would be no language on the bottom. It would just be a picture. But you can make them for all different categories of things that your child sees regularly around the house. So for example, these ones are ones that I created that are all things to do with the kitchen. And because I created them myself, I went ahead and tried to find pictures of things that resemble the materials she was actually using. So this is a real picture of her fork and her spoon. This looks similar to the bowls and plates that we use in our house. This is the exact cup that she owns and this table and chair looks pretty similar to what her weaning table and chair looked like. It is important if you do make a set of these that you don't provide them with too many cards. Five to seven cards is usually more than enough. And there are all kinds of fun games and variations that you can do with these cards. So not only will your child like to look through them and just look at the pictures, eventually you can even start doing something called a three-part lesson where you actually lay the cards out and say, this is soap. This is a towel. This is a toothbrush. And once your child is capable of pointing and you know that he or she knows what some of the different objects are, you can say, can you show me the towel? And they'll point to the towel. 
Or can you show me the soap? And they'll point to the soap. And then once your child is actually verbal, you can say, what's this? And they'll say soap or what's this? And they'll say toothbrush. So there's a lot of different uses that you can have for these cards over time. Again, I would definitely recommend laminating them because children do not know how to be very gentle at first when they're first learning how to handle their materials. Another variation on that language activity is printing out a set of cards that actually match 3D objects that they own in real life. And a popular one to start with are the animal figurines. I think just because so many of us have them, but if you have figurines of anything at all, food, buildings, vehicles, things like that, then you can make cards for just about anything. So I chose to use her animals. She's got one of each kind in this basket. I think there's a total of six. And I went online and I found, again, the exact picture that matches each of the animals that she has. And they're actually almost the same size as well. The whole idea is for her to lay out each of the cards. And then she goes through the basket and she matches them up with each of the corresponding cards. It's important in the beginning that the picture matches exactly with the objects that you're using. If they're slightly different or if it's only part of the animal, that can be really confusing for a younger toddler. But as time goes on, you can make this activity more advanced. You can use similar pictures that don't match them exactly. And you can also show only parts of the animals as opposed to the whole thing. And they can work on matching that too. So that's all I have to show you guys today. I hope you got some really good ideas. If you have any questions at all about any of the activities that I showed you or how they could be used with your child, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'll be happy to talk with you guys about it. If you like like this video then please be sure to subscribe to my channel because it is part of a larger series called Montessori at home aimed at providing practical tips for busy parents just like you and me for implementing Montessori philosophies in your home with your child I also put a link to the playlist for all of the videos in this series down in the description box below if you're ready to watch more of them and be sure to stay tuned next week when I share with you a variety of different books that I've purchased and read that I think are absolutely wonderful for parents who are just starting out with using Montessori in their homes and want to learn more about it. Thanks so much for watching.